Hey, this is Sarah from Sarah Types. Today I'm going to do a what's on my iPhone SE because I did a what's on my iPad Pro and everyone really liked it and some people requested what's on my iPhone. Okay, so on my main page, first I have my calendar, my photos, clock, Safari, and then I have my Etsy store on there. Uh, this just allows me to keep track of orders and any messages. I also have the budget app. I use this for daily budget so I know how much I can spend in a day on snacks or my lunch or whatever at work. So it's pretty handy for that. I don't have it set up for June. That's why there's no numbers in it. Um, but it's really great to just keep on top of things like that add up throughout the day. And then I have notes and then I also have Duolingo. I try and keep on top of Duolingo. I'm a little bit behind. I don't think I've used it since getting this phone, um, but I'm still trying to learn Dutch. Uh, it's a tough language to learn, but um, I'm determined. I only have two pages on my iPhone or two screens because I like to keep everything in little boxes. So uh, my first box and the second screen is my health area. And the app I'm showing you right now is called Think Dirty. And it's actually where you can find out information about products you use, like in the bathroom, um, cosmetic type products or stuff for your hair. You can see the number rating on the right tells you how bad or how good they are. So if it's like green, number three, it's pretty good. It can go all the way up to 10, 10 being bad. And then you can store these products on your bathroom shelf and kind of like see what your overall rating is. They don't have a ton of products in there, but they do have a lot of the main ones. So if there's a product you're interested in buying, you can always look it up on here and see, you know, if it's toxic or whatever. And then I have the seven minute workout app. Um, if you feel like doing a quick workout, you can just use this and then it will tell you what to do, which is nice. Um, but I haven't had it set up on this phone, which is why I have all these uh, pop-ups happening. And after this, I have the Flow app, which if you're a female, you might have this as well to track your periods. Um, it's pretty easy to use, it's the one I like the most so far. And then I have an app called Bico, or I think it's pronounced Bico, and it basically tracks um, how far you're going with your bicycle and uses your distance towards points. So you can use the points towards like bike tune-ups or coffee. Um, basically just like riding your bike will save you money. <laughs> so it's a win-win. In the next group of apps, I have more of my tools. So this one is called Rocket Man, and it basically tells you when the next uh, Toronto Transit bus or streetcar is coming. Also, my cell phone so provider, you know a list maker. Um, and then this Neo app is hooked up to an outlet I have in my bedroom, so you can use it to turn on and off a light because. I don't know, it's kind of cool to have in the outlet, it's kind of hidden. And then I have as well as um, PayPal, Mirror, which and is then Sketch, Google so Translate, you which is UI really cool if you haven't seen it yet. yet. I'm just going to show you really quickly. Um, I'm going to translate something that is written in German to English. You can download the dictionaries for German so it's offline, so you don't have to use your data when you're traveling. I'm pretty sure that's how it works, but I am using this at home with Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to bring up um, Safari on my iPad Pro and just search for something in German. So I'm just going to grab this image here that like names parts of the face and then I'm going to use the Google Translate app to kind of like hover over top to get that picture in shot and you can see how it changed all the German words because I'm showing you here on iPad that it has the regular words and then it changes the type to English so you can, it's pretty cool and next time I travel I'm definitely taking that with me so then I also have Gmail and Google Hangouts of course and then on my social side I have Pinterest, WhatsApp, Yelp, Spotify, Skype, Slack, Messenger, Instagram, and Ritual. Ritual is probably only in Toronto, but 
basically allows you to order food and skip the line so you can just go straight to picking it up and you get points so you save money off purchases. And here I am on Instagram. If you don't follow me, you should. I'll leave my Instagram handle on the screen. And then in this group, it's mostly like Apple stuff and then Ebates. I've only just started using Ebates and so far I haven't really saved lots of money, but I'll leave a link in case you want to use Ebates. And then in my last group, I have photography. Um, I have Capture for my GoPro, Samsung for my camera, and then a few apps for photo manipulation. I mostly use uh, ViscoCam because you can copy and paste edits really easily. You just click it, click on copy edits, click another photo, and then click paste edits. So it's really good for consistency sake. And then I also use this watermark app in case I'm uploading a hand lettered quote and if someone reposts it, I wanna make sure that I'm credited. So I'll just grab a photo and then I have um, a watermark already loaded in there. Uh, but you can change the fonts, you can change the colors and you just like drag it wherever you want it. Another app I really like is called InShot. I use this for all my videos for stories and for Instagram posts because you're able to change the size of the canvas. Um, they have all of the different types of canvases available. So you just pick whichever one you want and this is the one I use for stories. So you can just enlarge the photo so it all fits. And in this example, it's a photo but you can do it for video as well. It's super handy, especially when you have a video that is taken wide and you want to make it vertical so if it's in your stories, you can just spin it around on this app. They also have a bunch of stickers that you can add, like the one I just put in here. Um, if you do it on a video, you can have like an animated sticker. So in this example, I'm putting it into story format again, and just enlarging it so it all fits. And then uh, I'm grabbing a sticker. You can see they're all kind of animated now. So you can just drag it and put it wherever you want and you can resize it as well. You can also change at which point in the video you want it to stop and start. So if I, I just press play, I'm showing you that I added it like halfway through the video. So if I fast forward through, you'll see it pop up like a little bit further down. You can also add music and you can change the speed as well. and you can add text too. So that's my favorite app for editing um, the dimensions of videos and photos to fit in Instagram. And I also use, um, I've used this one before, but it's basically just for square sizes. So I don't really use this one anymore now that I have InShot. And then I use Afterlight for mostly if I wanted to just add some of the different types of lighting effects, like the bokeh effect, um, just so has a little bit of sparkle, but I don't really use it for the image editing because I just use the disco cam. But you can see it just added a lighting effect and you can change how strong or how faint you want it, which is pretty cool. Um, and I use Planoly to organize and schedule all of my Instagram posts. I actually just bought the pro version. I was using the free version for a while. So I just signed up for three months. Uh, so hopefully I like it, but we'll see how it goes. So that's all of my apps. Hopefully you found something that might help you with, I don't know, your Instagram posting or Next time you go on a trip, you know how to translate something. Um, also, I just like seeing what's on other people's phones because I'm nosy. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks. Bye.